morning and welcome to another Thankful Thursday. Today, I become a film critic and share with you my favorite holiday films of all time. Now, for anyone who knows me, you know that I love film going all the way back to the silent film era, but don't worry, we're not going to stretch that far back. I'm going to share with you some classics uh, and some more recent films as well. More classics, FYI. And explain to you why I'm thankful for each one of them. Uh, first one is Miracle on 34th Street. This is the 1947 classic. This film sends a message about believing in one another and the importance of having faith in things that we can't always explain or understand. If you haven't seen this version yet, or this movie at all, please check it out. Let me know if you believe in Santa Claus. Another film that I feel teaches those same messages is more recent, uh, and that is Elf. Will Ferrell did such a wonderful job of portraying an ideal and innocent character. A big thanks to Will Ferrell for making this an instant holiday classic. Next movie is one that uh, I find not too many people uh, have seen. It's called The Bishop's Wife, uh, with a great cast, cast of characters starring uh, Cary Grant as an angel. And if you pay attention, you'll actually see some familiar faces in another holiday classic that we'll be getting to shortly. But this movie also came out in 1947, and uh, I think the overall message is about appreciating what you do have. I think from this film, we realize that we should be focusing on the things right in front of us, and those people and, and things that are most important in our lives. As the film goes on, uh, I think one of the greatest messages that it teaches is that sometimes we're trying to achieve these grand things, uh, thinking that it's going to help others, um, when in turn it's actually just another way to fill our own egos. Grand gestures and moments are certainly always nice to have in our lives, uh, but it's those day-to-day -day things that, that truly do matter the most in the long run and at the end. A very tough lesson to learn, uh, Cary Grant's character had to learn, was to learn how to walk away from things that you really want and just deal with the cards that you've been dealt. Before I cover my absolute favorite holiday film, uh, which, again, if you know me, you know which one it is, I wanted to throw in a couple of uh, honorable mentions, I should say, at least the uh, ones that are just for fun, but still very thankful to have, have in our holiday library. Uh, the first one is Home Alone. What can I say about Home Alone? It's just a fun and funny movie to watch. It has a great cast of talented actors and actresses portraying some awesome characters. And what is it they say about comedy and tragedy? The only difference is who it's happening to. And as long as Harry and Marv are the ones getting hurt, it's funny. Who knew pain would be so funny? Another movie that I love and make it a point to watch every year is A Christmas Story. If you're going to watch this movie for any reason, uh, watch it for the comedic lines. Uh, there's just some absolutely funny and memorable lines out of this movie. So many great moments sprinkled throughout the entire movie. It's worth, worth the watch from beginning to end. And you know, whether you grew up in that era or an era like that, I think it's always fun to reminisce about your childhood memories and the time with your families during the holiday season. This next film has had so many different variations of it. It's a classic Dickens book, and I've loved several different versions, all the way from the first one, I think it was Alistair Sims back in the maybe 30s or even before. Or actually, I think there was a version before him, possibly. Um, all the way through Bill Murray's Scrooge. In all honesty, I would have to say my absolute, absolute favorite version of this film and this story is a radio classic and I'm not sure if it was the 1938 or 1939 version. I know Lionel Barrymore was supposed to be in that one, and I absolutely love Lionel Barrymore, which he's going to be mentioned in the next movie. But I think he had fallen ill or couldn't make the production that year. If you do appreciate classic radio, I'm going to see if I can find a link and, and put it down below in the caption. Uh, please do check it out. Always fun to hear the commercials in between and how marketing and advertising really haven't changed too much, uh, besides the tone of the actors. And if you haven't read the book... It's a classic. Check it out. So my all-time favorite holiday film is It's a Wonderful Life. This movie came out in 1946, and uh, to my understanding, it didn't get as much love as it gets now. Uh, I think uh, post-World War II, people may not have been in the best of moods, uh, given all the loss that they experienced. But besides being my favorite holiday film, uh, I would have to say it's on my very short list of best films of all time, in my own personal opinion. The acting, line delivery, directing, cinematography, simply a symphony on film. I first saw this film in my teen years and have watched it every year since, whether it's at home um, or at the Music Box Theater on Southport. This story teaches some of the same life lessons uh, that you'll find in A Bishop's Wife that came out a year later, like appreciating what you do have and dealing with the cards that you've been dealt. And yes, the cynics can pick apart this movie and the characters and their decisions and choices, like if they're trying to debate how Jack could have fit on the that chunk of wood next to Rose uh, at the end of the Titanic. But to the cynics, I say, go make a better film. If you can't, just shut up and let us enjoy our movies, okay? Going back to It's a Wonderful Life, 
uh, to watch the story of a person grow up from from their youth to, to adulthood and see all of the frustrations, joys, tough decisions that so many of us have to face in our own lives, to see how important that family and community are, to see how crucial it is to have faith, and not just faith in a religious sense, but faith in, faith in each other as human beings, faith in others' intentions, then to see how that faith is tested when everything's taken away. You have the option to see how life would be like if you weren't around, to see what would happen to your loved ones, to see all the good that may not have happened uh, thanks to you or your presence or your inspiration. It's just an amazing concept for a film uh, that actually derived from a, a short story, if you didn't know that piece of movie trivia. This is a movie that, if you've seen it once, uh, you'll probably start tearing up from, from just the opening lines. Uh, but what a great movie to en enjoy to watch from beginning to end. And it's not a short one, uh, but it goes by really quickly. Uh, and what a great experience to have just about every emotion you can uh, stirred up inside. Great to watch on your own. Better to watch with a crowd, especially a crowd of people who love the film, like at the Music Box. So if this is not one that you've seen, please, please check it out. Watch it with an open mind and open heart. So that's my list of favorite holiday films. Are there any that I missed? I'm sure somebody's going to mention Die Hard. Certainly a great movie that took place around Christmas. Not sure if I consider it a Christmas classic, but a great movie nonetheless. Lots of love to Bruce Willis. What do you think of my list of movies? What are your favorite holiday movies? Feel free to share below in the comments section. And as always, I am thankful most of all to you for watching. And I appreciate your time. I know time is precious, something that we never get back. So for you to spend a few minutes here with me means the world. Go enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you next week. Happy holidays.